Cheeky monkey. No you. 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 It's making me very uncomfortable how sincere you're being right now. It's creepy. I was driving a shit up the windows, shit on the engine. I did everything. Okay. Can you call me a dickhead? You're a felon. No, I think I think it could be that. Um, Welcome to episode 31. I'm on the Instagram. Hello, I'm doing the intro. How are you? Did I'm you not just hear what I said? No, I wasn't listening. Fucking hell. Keep that in there, that's funny. Hello, welcome to episode 31. 31, 31, 31, 31 of Ghost Hunts. Ghost Hunts, Ghost Hunts, Ghost Hunts. Hello! I just touched my boobs. Why? I just, I just wanted to. So weird. Sorry! Fucking hell. Can't get the stuff these days. Um, Hannah B. Hannah Bishkovsky. Susie Priest. Pick Susie, 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 Susie. Hannah Pick a card. Okay, we're going straight in. I'm hoping this week there's no devil in our midst. <laughs> what is it? Oh. Oh. Justice. Oh, a lovely card, Justice. Oh. Justice. Ha, 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 ha. Well, Hannah, Justice is simply the representation of fairness and balance. It reminds us that we're always responsible for our actions and that there are consequences for everything. That's a lovely little card. Justice represents truth. It encourages finding truth through facts and by being thorough. Do not be too hasty to deal out judgment before knowing the full truth. I think that's amazing because that's what we do. We, we, we hear stories and we go, but what's the truth? Like, we're quite sceptical about ghosts. Well, I was, but I'm not anymore. I'm, believe, I'm a believer. But it was, you know, it's about, like, there are consequences for everything and we have to think about the facts and be thorough. I think that's really apt. Yeah, that's great. Love it. And um, we might as well get straight to it. This episode's going to be a listener story special because you guys have sent all your you sent so many creepy as shit tales that we can't. We're never going to get them all done in Creep of the Week. So we're going to do a listener special now, and then we're going to next week we're going to continue to do Creep of the Weeks. Yeah, and then we're going to do some more. So we will get there. Everybody who's been asking if we're going to read them out, we will read them out. Thank you. So keep keep them coming. Keep them coming. Keep them goddamn coming. And they're coming. also good. So we're going to do like yeah, we're just going to do a series of them. They also keep us in check because we can't take the piss out of yours. Yeah. Legally. Well, we can. We can a bit. Yeah. We can. I um, feel like the people who send in in the kindest way. Um, <sighs> but yeah. So should we just get straight in? Yeah. Do you want a story? I do. Are you going to go first? I'll go first. Oh, okay. Ready? Okay, so this is from, I think she, she's a, I'm not going to say her name just in case she doesn't want us to, but she's a Yorkshire blogger. Oh, cool. Yeah, yeah, there she is. Oh, a lady. Um, thank you so much for saying how much you like the pod too. Very, very kind. Um, okay, so this is from the Yorkshire blogger. I won't say her name just in case. <clears throat> So, about two months ago, my little Irish grand... Oh, my little Irish grand... Grandpa. Grandpa. My little Irish grandpa. Did you say she's from Yorkshire? She makes it sound like a leprechaun. Yeah, but he's <laughs> Irish. There's my little Irish grandpa. Okay, great. Fuck well, it, it took us... pay attention? Two minutes uh, before pay we started. Pay attention. <laughs> my little Irish grandpa. <laughs> Don't you think... Say it and tell me it's not fun to say. My little Irish grandpa. <laughs> my, my little, little Irish, grandpa. Irish grandpa. Yeah. No, um, I really, heard. Really nice. Oh no, you the one that told me that uh, joke about. Oh, God. <laughs> we can't do that. Englishman and Irishman. No. What? Yeah. What? We can't do that. Okay. Okay. So about two months ago, my little Irish granddad was in hospital with days to live. We were all aware and taking it in turns to visit the hospital. I had come home this particular evening, and my partner had gone fishing. Oh my God, I love fishing. What? Yeah. What? Really? Do you like fishing? Well. No. You're an angler, are you? No, I like sitting down and not doing anything. And that's what fishing is. I was upstairs pottering and chatting with my auntie about my granddad and heard someone knock on the back door. I thought, bloody hell, that's weird. You have to walk past the ring doorbell and it would alert me. So I went down and no one was there. My auntie sent me a voice note telling me the exact same story 
that had happened at her house. That's weird, isn't it? Both of us were oblivious to it happening to each other. This was two days before my granddad passing. I was getting really weirded out on the run-up to his passing because without fail, I kept waking up at 3.05 every night. Without Ooh, fail. Oh, that's witching hour. No, is it? I thought it was 12. No, I thought it was 3 in the morning. That's when it's like... I don't know. That's maybe we'll have apparently to when weird shit goes down, 3 in the morning. Oh. I kept waking up at 3.05 every night without fail. No explanation, just kept waking up feeling like someone was watching me. Fast forward to the evening my granddad passed, once again, 3.05 a.m. I was awoken by the Alexa at the side of my bed playing The Mavericks Just Want to Dance the Night Away. I have never shit myself as much in my life. <laughs> and Alexa, technology is a fucking bastard. Yeah, yeah. The other day I said something, I, I was um. I said to my nephew, and I didn't even say it loud. I was like, Freddie, give me a kiss. And Alexa went, mwah, mwah, mwah. Oh, no. I was like... That's horrid. That's too... Because I was just going, Freddie, give me a kiss. Mwah, mwah, mwah. No, 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 no. Uh, uh, oh, my God, I just breathed in too fast. <coughs> <laughs> Straight into the mic. Sorry. Um, I have never shit myself as much in my life. The significance, myself and my granddad always used to sing this song on the karaoke together. Oh, that's so cute. <sighs> and that weird as fuck. I have never been so bloody freaked out that the Alexa has turned itself on playing this song at 3.05 a.m. My God, it's like her own 2-2-2, isn't it? Yeah. The day before his funeral, myself and my fellow were downstairs. I was in the kitchen and him in the living room, and the living room light started flickering. I was walking up the stairs, and once again, the upstairs Alexa started playing Just Want to Dance the Night Away. Again. And the bathroom taps had turned themselves on. Oh, my God. This all can't be a coincidence. I was getting weirded out so bad. Yeah, I would have been. The icing on the cake was that my granddad's funeral... There were nine, on the day of my granddad's funeral, sorry, there were nine close family at his house which had now been gutted and emptied with nothing left in it. I was stood in the garden and looking at the lawn. Lo and behold, there were my granddad's hospital tags which he wore in hospital. The dates and dates of his death were written on the tags. My granddad hadn't been home since hospital. Oh, no. And he had been there for five months. Oh, my God. That's weird, isn't it? That's really weird. We also had nine balloons released outside of his house before the funeral, with all nine of them being used by nine family members. My mum went back the day after to take the last little bits, and there was a single green balloon floating in the living room on its own. What the fuck? That's quite sweet in a way. Do you think that's like his, his spirit that hasn't... Like, it's not fully passed. Yeah. And he's sort of there that being like... Cute. What about those fucking hot hospital tags? It's just his way of being like, I haven't quite left the other realm. Mm. I don't know. She's also um, a works in end-of-life nursing, so... Oh, really? Mm. Oh, Very I similar she, to what I, I used she's to got do. tons of other stories then. That is spooky. But in a way, I don't know, there's... Like, from reading all the stories, I do read about people who work with, like, like end-of-life yeah. nursing and... It, it feels like this realm between like, and especially because we posted this um, video on TikTok about that one about Jenny and oh, Sarah. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. And loads of people have been weighing in with their like, you know, either experiences or what they think has happened. And loads of people like really believe that there's this like, there's this passing between life and death. And there's this realm that in the in-between, the in-between state where you'll suddenly revert to like your like you'll see children or you'll see a, a pet or a mm. or a loved one that's like beckoning you to the other side. Oh my god. And a part of me is like, is that maybe quite reassuring that you see something quite Well no no Ruth, don't come coming for me. <laughs> Stay <laughs> back off, bitch. <laughs> this is from Amy. Right. Hi Susie and Hannah. Hi, Amy. In brackets, or Hannah and Susie don't want to start an argument. <laughs> Amy, you got it right the first time. No, it's right the second time. Don't doubt your instincts, just go with it. By the way, if anybody ever gets a message off us on Instagram and it says, you'll know who it is because it either says, love Hannah and Susie or Susie and Hannah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> or I'll just sign with an S. And, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, but, but well done, Amy. It's Susie and Hannah. So, yeah, that's correct. Absolutely love the show. You guys honestly make me laugh so much. I cannot thank you enough for everything you guys do. Well, Aww. you're a bloody legend. Oh my God, you're so welcome. I think she's the best. Okay. I wanted to share this story with you, which happened to me when I was younger, circa 2009, and I went on holiday with my dad. 
He'd taken us to Devon to stay on a holiday camp. It was the first holiday we'd taken together and subsequently the last since my parents had split up. I was so excited to spend time with my dad exploring somewhere that we'd gone when I was a lot younger. During the week we were there, nothing spectacular happened until we decided to go to a supposedly haunted house. My dad and I share a love of all things paranormal, and he would tell me stories of when he was working as a funeral director, of all the things that would go bump in the night or move or go missing. When he told me where we were going, I was so excited. He parked the car and we walked up together to the little cabin that served as a gift shop, and that's when things started to go south. Once we paid, we walked towards the entrance, and an older gentleman had spotted myself and my dad and stormed up to us in a rage. He started to shout that I'd already been in three times today and that I'd, I'd seen the building enough. Myself and my dad were taken aback by this, and my dad started to get annoyed by this man's behaviour. We've never been here before. We live in a completely different county, my dad said, making the man stop and look at me closely. I apologise, miss. You look like someone who we've seen multiple times today, he said <laughs> and walked away. <laughs> I'm so glad I got my Devon in. Mm. My dad and I looked at each other and just walked towards where a tour group was forming. We went through the house, hearing all about the history and how a girl was bricked up alive behind a wall because she became pregnant with a smuggler and she now haunts the building, showing visitors that she's there by rocking a crib. Oh. Most Haunted investigated it once and totally made it appear 1,000% worse than it really was, but I digress. I definitely want to watch that episode. We carried on towards the kitchen that was at the back of the house and the tour guide stopped us and asked us if we were missing anyone. We all said no and carried on, but the tour guide kept looking at me. Towards the end of the tour, the guide stopped us and asked if, asked if I had been on the tour before. And after saying no, he got annoyed. We've already been here today. Once he'd finished talking, a door upstairs slammed and we heard running above our heads. I held on to my dad in fear as I had no idea what was going on. We carried on to where the office for the staff was to have the manager run out looking white as a sheet. He looked at me and then at the tour guide. How did she get back down here so quickly? <gasps> the manager asked the tour guide looking at me. She's been here the whole time, the tour guide replied, looking both concerned and confused. Well, I've just seen her on the security cameras running up downstairs and slamming doors. He looked at me as if I was going to say that I was the one running around, but I just remember looking at him dead in the eyes and saying, no. My dad and I went to have a look at the footage away from the group, and I can confirm that there was someone upstairs who looked like me, slamming the door to the steps to the kitchen and running out of view. Oh, that's so scary. My dad and I got quickly out of there, but I took a look back at the house as we left, and I'm certain that I saw a girl in one of the bedroom windows looking out with what looked like a menacing grin on her face. After this incident, when we're talking hours later, I became super sick. My dad didn't know what was wrong, but I couldn't eat, I couldn't drink, I was sleeping for hours and was running a fever. I don't know what fully happened to me, but I made a recovery seven days later. I just wanted to share this as it was an out of the world experience and I wanted the best ghost hunts ever to know. Aww. And then she's put here, I think it could, could have been Lynn. But who knows? Anything's oh my possible. God. Best ghost, ghostly wishes. Uh, ghostly wishes, Amy. That's really creepy. I like it. There was a good story. There was a plot twist. I also like, it's one thing like someone running about and slamming doors and then this ghostly grin, but the idea that it's a doppelganger. Imagine seeing yourself. I think doppelgangers exist. What are doppelgangers? A doppelganger is like, a, it's a version of you, a, a double. It's a doppel. Scare. I bet mine's even more fucking mental. You know, there's um, there's a there's like an app or there's a thing you can do online where you know how like Google Lens or like Google can like um, recognize your face in a photo. So it, it oh, yeah. scans oh, the yeah, internet yeah, 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 and yeah, yeah. it finds your lookalike. -y. But like, I don't particularly think I want to do it. No, that sounds hard. I would Maybe we'll do that one, Mike. Yeah, we should. I do, I, st I don't want to see my lookalike. I'm I'm unique and special. <laughs> This is from Rosa. Hey guys, this is a true experience for you. So years ago, I used to work in a huge care home. It was a super old building and really creepy. Staff had spoke of many paranormal experiences that they had had, particularly on nights. I used to wear nights, I feel your pain. 
But I thought they were just trying to wind me up because it was my first ever night shift. There was only ever one member of night staff in the whole building. We had a resident who slept on the second lounge on a sofa with the door open. She wouldn't ever sleep in her bedroom upstairs. And she said it was haunted. Oh, no. This night around 2 a.m., I saw a small person running past the door to the lounge I was sat in. I got up from the sofa and heard a voice saying, Mummy. Oh, God. From down the hall. The resident who sleeps downstairs used to play tricks on the staff all the time, so I figured it was her. I stood up to go and find her, but when I walked past the second lounge door, she was fast asleep on the sofa. I felt so creeped out that I rushed back to my lounge and sat on the sofa facing the door and didn't dare move all night. When the morning staff came in, I told them what had happened and a detailed description of the person I thought I saw. They all looked shocked and knew exactly who I was referring to. I had described a lady who used to be a resident in the care home years before I started working there, and she often used to run up and down the hallways at night. Oh, God. Creepy, isn't it? What a resident saying mummy. What? Yeah. Oh, that's even creepier. I know. Honestly, these care home stories, I, I think there's just so many of them. We might have to do a special about like. Do you know what all I think it is with care seen. homes? Because I used to work in care homes, and I obviously know very, very sadly what happens to people when they get older and things like dementia and all that. Um, and I think that if what if what we if what Richard said was true, that when we die, if it's kind of a traumatic, high impact death, yeah then you can kind of be stuck in that situation. I think care homes are probably the ideal environment for it because people are just so traumatized. People are just, like, are in so much distress Yeah, that it's really... It's making me very uncomfortable how sincere you're being right now. It's creepy. <laughs> I know, but can you call me a dickhead or something? It's really <laughs> you're weird. a bellend. <laughs> no, I think I think it could be that if that is the, if if ghosts are real, and I'm not saying they are, mm. but if ghosts are real, then care homes have got to be breeding them, haven't they? Yeah, but I, I can see my how sincere I feel about it. It's just because. They are sad places and the emotions are so high. And also, like you said, that if you have got dementia and you are seeing things and there are like... Do you know what I mean? Like, you're not in the mental state that we all no. live in normally, so... And as we've said before, you're only... Uh, what is it? You only are able to access 10% of your brain. Right. What's the other 90 fucking percent Right, doing? I think people are tapping into something else in mm. places like where the realm is a bit blurred. Anyway, I love it. What's happening? What, what are you doing? This is... Just bear with me. What's happening? What are you doing? This is a story... Why do you look like you're up to no good again? From Izzy. Hi, Hans. Absolutely loving the poddy. I listen to you guys at work and look insane when I laugh out loud and tell my colleagues I'm listening to a ghost podcast. Uh -huh. Here's my story. This happened to me when I was about 12. I'm 24 now. I was staying at a friend's house, but I was sleeping downstairs on a sofa bed in the living room. Everyone else was upstairs. They have quite an old house, about 100 plus years old, but I was always... 100 plus years old, but I was staying in their new extension. I've always felt like I've had some kind of connection to the spirit world. I always felt like I could feel energies of houses, etc. I always felt super creeped out at this house. They had these huge French windows in their hallway, and I swear I could see people looking back at me through the doors. I never told my friend this, but I always just had these really strange feelings, like I was being watched and wasn't welcome. Anyway. I'm having this sleepover, and I've been left downstairs on my own in this scary old fucking house. Lol. I love Izzy. She's great. I woke up at about 3 a.m. I told you, 3 a.m. is the witching oh, hour. Oh, maybe it is. So is that, does that mean that any time between 3 and 4, or 2 and 3? 3 and 4. Mm, you just made that up. No, it's witching hour, 3 a.m. You guessed. I woke up at 3 a.m., and I could hear this really distinct whistling. Oh, no. Like tiptoe through the tulips. 
Oh, I don't like it. It was pitch black outside. Because it was the living room, they had no blinds or curtains, so I could see out of the windows and doors outside. This whistling didn't sound like the wind or any bird I've ever heard. It was definitely a person whistling a tune. It went up and down in different notes, playing the same tune, and would pause as if someone was taking a breath. I don't like this at all. I remember being so scared because it sounded like they were right outside my door. I got up out of bed trying to look for something to use as a weapon, but all I could find was a plastic cup. <laughs> Which is <isn't laughs> not a great weapon. <laughs> <You're> like, <laughs> I'd be so scared I'd just Officer, crunch it. there's somebody out here with a plastic cup in their throat. They're definitely <laughs> dead. <laughs> I think we should replace guns with plastic cups. Uh, yeah. The world would be a better Obviously, place. Obviously, as you know, that I don't agree. <laughs> You're like, nah, fuck the plastic cup. <laughs> uh, I tried to call my parents, but I had no signal on my phone. Signal? Signal. Signal. <laughs> fuck Susie, Jesus fucking Christ, you dickhead. Oh. Someone just walked past the park. Oh, Susie absolutely shit herself. I had no signal on my phone and their home phone was out in the kitchen. I couldn't stand. I was so scared and my legs were shaking like jelly. The whistling went on for what felt like forever. The same tune over and over. I got this prickly feeling like someone was standing outside watching me. Like if I went to the glass doors, a face would appear staring back at me. I honestly thought it was a murderer outside fucking with me and at any minute they were going to come and kill me. After about 30 minutes of me just standing and shaking, listening to this creepy fucking whistling, it stopped. Obviously, I couldn't get back to sleep. And as soon as I heard people awake in the morning, I asked everyone if they'd been listening to the radio or had been awake, thinking, hoping and praying it had been one of them, listening to something or watching something on the telly. Although I knew it wasn't because it did not sound like that at all. Everyone said they'd been asleep all night. I never told them what I'd heard. I've never been back in that house. I never will. Whatever that thing was, I'm sure it knew how scared I was. I've attached a keyboard recording of what the tune sounded like. Oh. Obviously whistled. Thanks, girl. Play Busy. it again. That's not very nice. <laughs> What's happening? <laughs> Lights just went off. Why are the lights, the lights off in the pod room? Off in the pod. Oh my god! No, honestly, shit like this really scares me. <laughs> Mike, have you just have you just dimmed the lights? No. Yeah, you have. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> there is some real freaking shit going on here. I fucking love that. that okay, was a great story. that was amazing. I love that. That that whistle is creepy as shit. Oh, my hair is absolutely fucked. Okay, so this is from Ben. Uh, hey, so the story is, while I was at work around midnight, we closed outdoors and was closing up for the night. Hang on, what? While he was at work, we closed the outdoor part of wherever he is. I don't know where he is because he hasn't searched, but I, ima I imagine it's a pub. Okay. Like, they closed in, the outdoors... They're closing up and they're closing up for the night. There's no one around, no one to be seen. I was cleaning and doing the final touches on the bar until I saw a black and white figure walk past an opening through the window. I walked out to see there was no one there. I then heard a voice whispering, Come here. No, no, don't come there. I work out and see, I work out, I walk out and see this figure standing at the bar, looking at me. My face dropped in shock and fear I was unable to speak. I was filled with fear, frozen in time. This figure walked towards me, then screamed. As I crouched down in fear, I stood back up to see no one in sight. Oh! <laughs> Thank you, Ben. Ben, that's... That's creepy. Come here. Come here. Oh, don't. Uh, no, thanks. When when uh, when the ghosts say come here, do not. Do not come here. Don't go in the attic. Don't, go there. don't follow the child. Don't go there. Don't go there. Don't go there. Don't go don't there. Don't go there. Okay. <laughs> so don't, don't go there. <laughs> Are we ever going to get out of this loop? This is from Daniel, and it's called London Underground Ghost Story. Love it. So, I used the tube a lot. And I never have any problems with it. It's probably the best transport system ever. I agree with that. But Bank Station has something against me. 
Every time I go there, I feel uneasy and very out of place. Yeah, well, same, because it's fucking rammed and it's absolutely ridiculous. Bank yeah. Station's a piece of shit. And it's full of wankers, isn't it's it? It's full of wankers. Wanker their wanker jobs. Go on, get out. Go and wank yourself off in the bank. I don't know why I said that. In the accent, all that weird. Every time I go there, I feel uneasy and very out of place, and I don't usually go there a lot, but when I do, I feel unwanted. And I usually go to Bank Station to switch trains... Did you hear my little throat then? Yeah, we both made weird noises. We both have very mucky mouths. Oh, God. And I usually go to Bank Station to switch train lines to go to Stratford Shopping Centre. My local tube line is the Northern Line, Oval Station. Same. Same. E and C. I always go bank. E and C, boom. Okay. I always go bank to switch lines, but if I use it on the southbound platform, I always see a flash when the train leaves, and I usually see a shadow. Oh, my God. But once, I saw a man in a suit jump into the train as it was leaving in a flash. I saw his face. He had a shocked old man face, and he was just frozen in the air. Bank Station has had its ghost story before, and I don't know if it's related to mine, but if anyone has seen the same as I have, then that proves Bank is haunted indeed. Oh, my God. That's actually given me goosebumps. Bank is haunted. The idea, obviously, like, well, not obviously, but the way I've taken that is that he's seen the flash of someone jumping onto the tracks. Oh, yeah. In a suit and just turning their head, looking towards him just as they're about to commit suicide. Or was bushed. Or fucking hell, murder. Yeah, I always prefer murder because it's a bit less sad, isn't it? Well, I mean, it's all sad. It's all sad. But like, yeah, I you know what I mean? I think he's seen someone just about to fall. Mm. <gasps> Daniel. And as we all know, the underground is fucking haunted as shit. This is from Sarah. Thank you so, so much, Which Sarah. Sarah? Sarah Stevens. Do you want a fucking address as well? Jesus. <laughs> so, I borrowed my mum's car, and me, or my mum, and me nor... Oh, OK. So, I borrowed my mum's car, and neither my mum or I had connected our phones to the car. Just as I pulled into the car park with my mum and son, who was playing with my mum's phone in the back, I switch off the engine and go to pick up my phone. But as I went to pick it up, my mum's phone started ringing. So I stopped what I was doing and gave it to my mum. Mum said, it's you. I said, no, it's not. She showed me her phone and sure enough, I was calling her, but I wasn't. So she put the phone down and it happened again. So she answered it and it was like white noise. Anyway, this happened again two more times with no recollection or or evidence of me calling her. She then called me in front of... um, Okay. We still think it was my dad. There was no expla- explanation. <laughs> Explication. Expl- Wait, why do they think it's the dad? Uh, oh, apologies. Sarah said, for con- this was the first message, for context, my dad passed away right before this. Oh. So they think it was... I'm sorry about that, Sarah. It's really sad. But it certainly seems a bit blurry weird. Um, but have you listened to that Uncanny episode about... The- <gasps> The guy getting Harry called. Yeah. Oh my god. This is what an episode that was. It was brilliant. I fucking shit my. I shit everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> I was driving. I shit up the windows. Shit on the okay. engine. I did everything. Okay. Um. There. I love it that you're like. I don't do poo talk. So but <laughs> you're like. I shat all over the windscreen. <laughs> no. It was. It was at my mum. Um. We were driving back from York, and I made my mum and my auntie and my brother listen to it on the way back. It, it was so terrifying. Good. But this is what I mean. Like. Um. Like the like phone Technology, call ghosts. Yeah. I find that really creepy. Well, it it does make kind of make sense. I think he was saying it in that uncanny episode, wasn't it? Like it does make sense that they would come through technology because it's energy. Yeah, and yeah. Technology is energy, and yeah. it can. <sighs> the idea of like. Mm. And my grandma that had to send me that text. Do you remember me telling you at like three o'clock in the yes. morning? Yes. Four o'clock in the morning. Yeah, I don't think that's she from had, her. She had that's not from her. Who picked up your grandma's uh, phone? I think it's my granddad. Who is no longer with us. Yeah. <gasps> and I think it was because I'd done the traitors. Do you think? Yeah, because he would have loved that. He would have loved that I was that I was Do you know what I mean? He would have loved that I was quite doing reassuring that. about it. And him saying, Is it on TV? Okay. Is a weird Jesus Christ. That's what I think anyway. 
Yeah, I kind of believe that. I mean, I, I'd love to have seen a camera on the room and been like, uh, I, I imagine mean, it just went. She could. I mean, ding. if it was anybody else, it was anybody younger because she needs her glasses and she's a bit more less. She's not like the youngsters. Yeah, we're kind of in the middle. You know, the young people pick up the phones and they're like, blah, 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 mm. and they're just away with it. But and she will. Just, it would be the process. It would be like I'd have. She'd have to sit up. She'd have to turn the light on. She'd have to put her glasses on. She'd have to type it out. I don't think she typed any message to mm, you, I don't think she did either. I, I think, think it was your granddad. I think it was G-Dad. G-Dad. <laughs> um, okay. Okay, this is from Peter. Thank you so much for submitting your story, Peter. Peter. I don't know why it now sounds like a sex line. Peter Brown, 2858. I worked in secondary school as a caretaker. One night, I was setting the hall up for an assembly in the morning. Do you know what? Doesn't the thought of an assembly just send shivers down your fucking spine? Let alone the ghosts. <laughs> but, oh, my God, it was torturous. Did you sit cross-legged on the floor? Oh, I remember, remember that being that? so uncomfortable. Fuck off, you Especially twats. when, yeah, yeah, just being on your School's period. School's just and, like, bullshit. Your, your oh, yeah. Skirt and, I know, oh, I know. Jesus Awful. Christ. It was hellish oh, it was growing like, up, wasn't it? It was just, like, no one, no one seems to give a fuck. No. Do you know what I mean? They're just it's just good for you. And I'm like, it's and not. And I was like, no, why should I have to fucking do what you said? Looking back, some of the teachers that I had were just fucking tyrants. Yeah, sadistic fucks. Yeah, just like really fucking awful. Yeah, they just obviously don't like kids. And you're like, why are you well, doing... Well, do you know, like, it's... it's. I mean, primary school, I think, is fine because when you're a child, you're quite comfortable and prim- you're quite comfortable mm. in yourself, aren't you? Like running around sticking your finger up your nose and, and people's ears and whatever and just yeah. being a dickhead but when you're a teenager you're like you're so uncomfortable in your own body so uncomfortable and then you're like oh and then you, everything's the, hell yeah and then people make you go and sit on the fucking floor oh my god sit, don't and to, you've got to wear your blazer like why yeah. I've got to wear my fucking blazer oh, it just it makes me annoyed <laughs> yeah. I worked in secondary school as a caretaker. One night I was setting the hall up for an assembly in the morning and in the hall you have a catering kitchen while I was setting up I could hear what sounded like chopping noises in the kitchen so as a caretaker, just in case someone's breaking in, I went over there and shouted, hello, anyone in? As the shutters were down, lights off, no more sound. I was carrying on setting the hall up and the chopper noise started again. I said, sod this, I'm gone. My boss came in the next morning and said, why didn't you set the hall up? And explained to him, he laughed, then helped me finish the hall which is weird. Oh, because he said, oh, I didn't want to stay around on my own, so yeah, can you help me? Of course cool. he didn't fucking stick around. Clever. A woman wow. came out of the kitchen and said, I've got something to tell you both. Doris has died. She died last night. She me and my boss looked at each other and anything. turned around. I said, who the hell's Doris? <laughs> wow, Peter. Uh, then the kitchen staff said, you know, Doris, she was the woman who chops the fruit in the kitchen. No. Yeah, so Dor, I'm all out. Like, if but I were going to die, I wouldn't go to work. Yeah, I know. You're I'm like, dead, better go and get that fruit ready for tomorrow. I'd be like, cool, I'm dead, I'm going to go spare. That's, so what, he was hearing that and she'd already died? Yeah. Oh, yeah. choppy, choppy Doris. Choppy, choppy dodo. Choppy dodo. <laughs> that's what they call her in the Choppy dodo, that's the name of the episode. Well, now here we are at the section of we get haunted, so you don't have to. Ba ba ba. Okay, Susie Poozy. I last week I was going to tell you to text, but I think your idea is a lot better. I was basically going to get you to send a text message to a number that you created in your head. I am okay. going to make you create the number though; it's not going to be totally random. Okay. So pass me a pen, and you're going to do it now. You're going to type it in on your phone as we go. So, but listen to me. First of all... I don't want to do the call. Yeah, I want you to it. do the no, call. No, I did it last week. Yeah, but it didn't go through. It doesn't matter. Still did it. <sighs> <laughs> okay. What's, so, uh, in your head, give me a number. <laughs> yeah, another one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they just keep... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's it, that's it. It's done. Okay. What yeah, okay, so in? zero... Oh, no. Oh, shit, we shouldn't have done that, should we? We'll beep it out. Okay. The if person ring. you were trying to reach is not currently able to accept oh. calls. Oh. Please try again later. Thank you. That's weird. What? I've never heard that message before. I've never before. heard that message before. Okay, is it my turn? Yeah. Oh, fuck's sake. Not much of a problem. <laughs> this is really not great. Mm-hmm. <laughs> 
nothing's happening. <clears throat> nothing's going through. Your turn. Okay. One um, more. No, one more for you. No, one yeah, more for you. It's your you. turn. I got through. You have to I get through to someone. Last time. You have to get through to someone. Okay, listen. Last last episode. You made me call about four different people. Yeah, but people. unless it goes through, it doesn't count. So go again. No, you go again. No. No, you go again. No, because I've yeah. got through to someone. No, go on. You haven't, no, you. You haven't spoken to anyone. No, you. 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 Short turn. Come on. I can't wait for someone to answer. <laughs> <laughs> Scared, Hannah. What are we going to say? Have you got a story? Oh, oh my God. Oh my God. <laughs> Hannah, I'm not What if it's the devil? <laughs> please don't pick up. Please don't pick up. Please don't. Sorry, this person can't leave answer at the moment. So please leave a message after the tone. If you'd like to change your message after you've left it, please press hash. For fuck's sake. Hello there. Um, I'm calling um, whilst doing a podcast. It's about ghosts. I'm wondering if you have a scary story, please text it to me. Or call back and let me know if you have one. that We've completely at random chosen a number out of thin air. We're called ghost huns. I apologise in advance for the random nature of this phone call, but if you do have any paranormal story you'd like to share with us in the spirit of random fun, please, please let me know, and I'm sorry for leaving you a strange voicemail. I hope you have a lovely day and a lovely life. Goodbye. Thank you. So funny. In the spirit of random fun, that's know. hilarious. Well... Thank uh, you for listening. If, to if they discussion. call back, I will. Uh, oh, that's going to be we'll hilarious. We'll update on the theory. Me and Susie are going for a wine now. Yeah, I think we're going to get into the sun. Um, yeah. I hope you enjoyed. Thank you for all those stories. Thank Please you. Please send more and more and more. Keep them coming. They really freak me out. Know, <laughs> I'm like, oh, the more I hear them, the more I'm like, yeah, ghosts exist. They just fucking do. Um, see you next week, guys. Bye. Bye. See you next week. Bye. 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 Bye.